Thank you very much. Um, again, uh, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Uh, I think the panels and the presenters today make it a little bit easier as we cover less ground in a more deeper way. So it's, I think it's gonna be shorter than yesterday. But it's been a wonderful day, wonderful morning as it was yesterday. And I think that we gradually went into what we were demanding yesterday about the, what Peter was saying about the uh, practicality of our definitions of common good. So I'll go very quickly through, um, and I'll see if that works. Again, it's not for you to read, it's just for me to memorize. Uh, we had this extremely good uh, presentation by Manfred Maxneef, uh, which personally I admire, and a fellow countryman. And uh, two things he said to uh, start this morning was neoliberal economics is killing more people than all arms put together. And it came out that the bailout's worth is about 600 years of world without hunger. And, and those are, uh, very powerful figures. He made a splendid uh, history of, ne of neoliberal economy, uh, following a thing he said, which I think is very good, in order to change something, we need to know its origin. And so he discovered that. Coming back to something which I think is crucial, and we're gonna go this probably tomorrow a little bit on education, is revision of economics teaching in schools of economics all over the world is of the utmost importance so as to include the multiplicity of economic thought. And I think that's very useful. Uh, and then he came to what he has proposed, this human scale development and human needs theory, and related that story about uh, the photocopying of the photocopying of the photocopying of Indian uh, villages in Latin America. And he came out that this economy is understood by simple people, uh, that true development starts from the bottom up, the whole the grassroots movements, and what mobilized people sometimes does not mobilize academics. Uh, and he reviewed the four very strong principles of this new economy, which is uh, proposed many years ago. Economics serve people, not the opposite. Growth is not development. Ecosystem services are as fundamental to our economic view, and permanent growth is impossible, which is a topic that came out yesterday as well. Permanent growth is impossible. That's a quick summary of um, Manfred, whoop, my next theory. Then we had the two panels. I'm gonna go through this as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm not gonna tell the concept of the panels. I'm gonna come back immediately to uh, the results of them. We had uh, the turning conventional leadership upside down. It was an excellent panel because it talked about leadership. Um, we have Father Dermont Reger talking about the Benedictine way, and I think it was very interesting to talk about governance. The leader is elected. Leadership is cooperative task. Participation and delegation are very important within that type of leadership. He talked about the qualities of leadership, adapt leadership style to the group. I'm a personal professor of leadership at universities, and what I get is people tend to lead the same way whatever they're doing. So if they are autocratic in their, in their jobs, they're autocratic in their family, they're autocratic in the foundation, they work, they're, they're autocratic everywhere. So they don't adapt their styles. Open you as a leader to contribution from others. Very powerful thing, remedying once one faults allows to up to remedy the faults of others. And what impressed me was his comment about the daily timetable there is a balance, there is a rhythm to the life in a monastery. I'm not sure if we have those balance and rhythm in our companies. Contemplative dimension of leisure. And I think uh, I was on the train coming up here from Zurich and everybody was on their laptops, on their Blackberries, on their iPhones. Nobody was watching the beautiful landscape you have here in Switzerland. So I think some of that contemplative dimension has been lost. Uh, and then we have Jean, pa Jean Pascal Bobst. He, he, he profoundly defends, he made a long description of his company, but beliefs and business are inseparable. You cannot do business from Monday to Friday and uh, follow your beliefs on Saturday and Sunday. They, they are inseparable. And some of those beliefs are about humility and forgiveness are key in management. Uh, then where we had um, Stuart Drew, which uh, as uh, Christopher described is the second man in this incredible company in India. And 
he gave something very important at the beginning. He says, common good is an extremely complex concept. And I tend to agree with this. We, we've discovered over these three years that what we're seeking here is the definition of common good and then the acting on it is a very complex thing. So, so I sometimes tell Christopher and, and the board of the Zermatt Summit, be patient. We're not gonna solve this in three sessions. We, we're gonna gradually address it. The default human condition is the common good. Uh, restore default basic values every now and then. You know, that, that's what he, uh, Stuart, did, described that he does. And he came with several ideas for our company, for our companies, turning leadership upside down, really. Enabling functions of the management towards employees. How do you enable capacities in within your employees? He said building trust within the company is very important. And he said that, and this is my word, through a maniac transparency, uh, which we don't have in general. Uh, use of trouble tickets, and he described everything about the trouble tickets, which I think he the amount of them receiving and the jobs of attending to those trouble tickets. Value delivered in excess of contractual agreements. Uh, I think that was a very powerful concept for us to incorporate in our companies. Ultimate challenge for the CEO, and this is his boss, is destroy CEO's office. I'm in the process of that personally. They've pushed me out. You know, I'm the CEO of my company. They have me in the garage right now. So, so gradually they're moving me out, so I think I'm, I'm in that way. Uh, and employees run the philanthropy fund of the company. It's not run by the board, it's run by the employees, that fund. I think all of these things are quite new and quite uh, in the lead of turning leadership upside down. And finally, uh, Frédéric Nard, generosity at the core of the business model. Generosity. When he described the finally, when he went to Winston, he said, generosity is at the core of the business model, meaning, providing meaning at all levels within the company. Meaning is an attraction and retention mm -hmm. force for talent. I think he said something of that. And I think if, you, if your company, and, and when the next panel comes, and I tell about, and when I review the next panel, if you have meaning within your companies, that is a very powerful force to attract talent. And people were describing this of young people saying, what is it that you do for the organizations? What do you do for the community? What do you do for your families? If not, I'm not working for you. It's an attraction and a retention force. So some of the points that came out from that uh, leadership upside down, which I think was a very powerful uh, scheme. And then the next one, uh, where we had the multi-stake hold the dialogue for the common good um, very quickly, they gave a very powerful definition of social business. Uh, at the beginning, uh, Arnaud said something about the opportunity that we see in social business for developed countries to learn from developing countries. I'm turning to like this, you know, this crisis of the 208. I was telling Manfred this thing over lunch. There is a bank in Chile called the Scotia Bank, uh, and because of Scotia Bank being a multinational bank, there is people from Canada, from Mexico, from Spain, from the United States working in Chile. None of them want to go back to their original countries. Ten years ago, being sent to Chile was being sent to jail, you know, to the worst part on the earth, down there in South America at the very end of the world. Now people don't want to leave. There's something about our countries that uh, might help the developed countries. Excellent examples, the four of them, or the three of them, of using entrepreneurial capacities, and we came in the Schumpeterian meaning of changing everything for common good. Result, and this is very important, of a combination of ideas, simple and disruptive, passion and hard work. So we come to touch passion again. Uh, they took not only the fact of running and doing the entrepreneurial acts of that company, but they took the responsibility to show their social business impact to society and government. If you see the case of Gonzalo, which I know more directly, he is a lot of telling the story about Triciclos, and so helping other people follow that example. Very important, investors can help projects and business to mature and develop. Sometimes I tend to see that this entrepreneur in the social, because they distrust the classical company, they don't seek the help of investors, and they're very helpful. Uh, and I think uh, somebody said, uh, Finally, I think uh, Ricard, Ricard Jean-Michel said it again, you can't do this alone, you need help. So seek for investors in your project. Even if they come from the traditional business sector, they're willing most surely to help. Um, 
Social business is not only about services and products, it is also about how you run the company, how you do design the company. This is very important. We're not doing social business just for the outside, for a different type of service, recycling uh, garbage. We are also designing a new type of company. Uh, and I, I give you the what uh, Gonzalo gave, check the bcorporations.net on the net. Uh, increase impact by taking social entrepreneurship more creative, and that's what we think, that social entrepreneurs are more creative, to the traditional companies which are at present seeking new ways. I think that was a very powerful comment made by Arnaud. Because again, my comment yesterday were about too much demonizing markets and demonizing governments. And this is a way of you know, getting these two worlds together. Okay, I can go and work, and they gave extremely good examples about, well, Sea Blue and Danone and Ashoka and Beringer Ingelheim, of these two worlds working together. Uh, the case of Danone, is a, it's a very, very powerful case that probably some of you know about. They is a big traditional company seeking for a new way uh, of going through common good, and rather than doing it alone, seeking for these young uh, social business, social entrepreneurs, to uh, define a way. And, and I think the example that Arnaud uh, Moreau said about Ashoka and Berlin Engel was a very good one. Um, when there were questions about main challenges, change the mindset, learn English was a joke, but I think it's an important fact. You can't make it alone, you need a partner. And finally, Gonzalo said, conversations need to change inside boards, inside company boards. That were the, the challenges. And finally, there is, there is no, um, slide for this because I was producing it as you speak, as you speak, uh, p spoke Patrick, this is uh, my, my taking. Life is too short to do things you don't believe in. I think it's a very powerful statement. Um, touch passions people have. And I like this because it shows things we can do to build the common good, all right? It's, it's, it's so we're uh, heading here for that practical test. Touch passions people have. Passions are powerful. Tell me what you do for nothing. I think it's a wonderful question to be put to boards. Gonzalo says, a new conversation in boards, tell me what you do for nothing. He described the four silks of the human heart, self, family, community, world, and that leads to making a better world. You know, the statement that is in every, in every vision of any company. He talked about emotion. Emotion is important, and particularly so for sustainability. And then he went into the several examples of uh, the new energy technologies, and I summarize that in energy world systems, political, business, individuals are starting to align themselves for common good, producing opportunity for innovation in energy technologies, and, she, and he gave several examples. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I value these examples because, again, it's an example of how we can work with, quote unquote, the classical market. When you gave that example of you know the electricity that you can the, the money that you can save and you give me, it's it's sort of classic economics. You know everybody's going to make a profit, and so that allow us to pass the practical reality challenge test that I think where the common good has to pass. Uh, he also m made a very important comment about the need for watching crimes. That was the word you use. Uh, being made in the sustainability uh, world, and, and he gave the example of food and oil. So sustainability by per se, it's not good. You know, it, we might make horrible mistakes or even, as you mentioned, quote-unquote crimes. And finally, your leader speech, which I'm not going to repeat. Thank you very much. <laughs>